One of the most encouraging signs in the U.S. economy over the past year has been the resuscitation of the American automobile industry from a near-death experience. And in many ways, the most dramatic recovery has been Chrysler's. Three years ago, the company was headed for the junkyard crusher, leaking cash and about to be scrapped, unloved and unwanted. But last year, Chrysler turned a $183 million profit and would have made a lot more if it hadn't decided to repay its $6 billion federal bailout six years ahead of schedule. Much of the credit goes to U.S. taxpayers and to Chrysler workers who accepted wage and benefit cuts. But none of it would have happened without the efforts of a 59-year-old Italian-born and Canadian-raised auto executive named Sergio Marchionne, who engineered a last-minute partnership with Fiat and an American-style success story. The story will continue in a moment. With his gray stubble, longish hair, relaxed demeanor, and trademark black sweaters, Sergio Marchionne looks more like a film director than an auto executive, but he is now the industry's biggest star. Sergio Marchionne. The CEO of Fiat had already rescued that company from financial ruin, and in Chrysler, Marchionne saw at least one similarity. Both companies had been through hell. I remember when I came here in 2009, there's nothing worse for a leader than to see fear in people's faces. It's been a long, rocky road, but fear is gone. What were they afraid of? Of not being here, right? It's that simple. I mean, this was really a question of existence. There's nothing worse in life than to sit there and be the victim of a process that's outside your control. And that was exactly the situation at Chrysler in early 2009 when Marchionne began negotiating with the federal government over a controlled bankruptcy of Chrysler that would allow Fiat to take over the failing auto company. It was the last hope for Chrysler and its 54,000 employees. And there wasn't a CEO in the world from the car side that would have touched this with a 10 football. It gave you a little leverage. Give me some leverage and a whole pile of downside risk. You can't, you know, for you to be the only guy at the bar, there's going to be a reason, right? Did you think it was a long shot? All these things are long shots. All. If it was that easy, then everybody would do it. If Sergio had not appeared, uh, I think it's very likely Chrysler would have been allowed to liquidate. Steve Ratner, who was head of the presidential task force on the auto industry, sat across from Marchionne at the bargaining table during the height of the economic crisis. Ratner believes that Chrysler's demise could have cost 300,000 American jobs up and down the industrial supply chain. Was he a tough negotiator? Uh, brutally tough, yeah, he, uh, but that's part of why he's successful. In the end, Marchionne and Fiat got a 20% stake in the brand new, slimmed down, debt-free Chrysler, plus a $6 billion high interest loan from the U.S. Treasury, just for taking the auto company off the government's hands and running it. He used the $6 billion to modernize Chrysler plants with state-of-the-art equipment to improve quality, upgraded 16 existing models in just 18 months, and began integrating Chrysler and Fiat's operations. Obviously, you saw something in Chrysler that you thought would fit well with Fiat. Yeah, I mean, from a product standpoint, they were the other half of the coin. When you put the two together, we were going to come up with a product portfolio that was absolutely complete. Chrysler's best assets were its Jeeps, minivans, and light trucks. Fiat's expertise was in small car technology and fuel-efficient engines, the very thing that Chrysler lacked. And next month, the first product of that collaboration will begin rolling off the assembly line in Belvedere, Illinois. This car didn't even exist on paper in June of 2009. It's the Dodge Dart, the first new compact sedan that Chrysler has produced in more than a decade. It's a slightly longer and wider version of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, re-engineered and built in the USA. Base price, just under $16,000, with 40 miles to the gallon. How important is this car to Chrysler? Um, if you're a serious car maker and you can't make it into the segment, it, it, you're doomed. It's got a little Italian flair. Yeah, 
just enough to make it interesting and it avoids all the pitfalls of being Italian, yeah? <laughs> Mechanically, it's good. Mechanically, it's outstanding. Under Marchione, the quality of both Fiat's and Chrysler products have improved dramatically according to consumer reports. Now Marchione needs to convince the public. We got it. We fixed it. This car has nothing to apologize to. For any, I mean, for anything. The darts produced at the Belvedere plant are not just for U.S. consumption. Marchione plans to begin exporting them to more than 60 countries. When he took over Chrysler in 2009, this plant had 200 workers. By the end of the summer, there will be 4,500. What do you think of American workers? I think the world of American workers. What happened here at Chrysler would have been impossible without the commitment that they've shown. Absolutely impossible. When I was looking at this deal back in 2009, I snuck into Jefferson, a plant that now makes the Grand Cherokee. And I'll tell you, if I had any reservations about doing this deal, it was after I saw the state of that plant. And the people that fixed that plant are the guys on the shop floor. Like most of Detroit's automakers, Chrysler was saddled with a stifling bureaucracy, which Marchione quickly culled. To change the management structure, he combed through the company and found 26 young leaders who would report directly to him. Were they on the management fast track? No. Some of these people were buried inside a, an incredibly hierarchical um, organization that you know, all pointed to the top. That This place was run by a chairman's office. That's the tower, right? Uh-huh. And the chairman's office is the top floor. It's empty now. We use it as a tourist trap. We bring <laughs> people up there. Why did you leave? Because nothing happens there. I'm on the floor here with all the engineers. With the engineers? Yeah. I can build the car with all the guys on the floor. That's all I care about. How did they feel about you having they love it on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> the official view is that they love it. He looks familiar to me. For 60 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doug Betts. How you doing? <laughs> He's hey, like, Doug, how are you? Whether they like it or not, everyone on the floor seems to have gotten used to his presence. Sorry to barge in on you no, like this, no but uh, does he walk in all the time? Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> so 300 in many ways is the, obviously the flagship of the Chrysler brand. 42-year-old mm -hmm. you know, Ralph Giles is in charge of product design at Chrysler and one of the rare holdovers from the old regime. The Chrysler 300 and the Dodge Dart are his babies. He says the company has always had good talent, but a lack of resources and execution produced cheap interiors and poor fit and finish. Everyone knew what was wrong with the cars. You ask any employee in the company, they could list 10 things that they would do better. And when you're given a chance to do those 10, 10 things better, you end up with a product that exceeds the sum of its parts. The company has also made strides in reshaping its image. Chrysler's dramatic imported from Detroit campaign with M&M was hugely successful. It's halftime. And this year's two-minute, eight million dollar Super Bowl ad with Clint Eastwood, extolling the resiliency of America and its automobile industry, caused a major stir and briefly became part of the presidential campaign. Republicans said that this was a, was a campaign commercial for President Obama, a payback. Did you anticipate that criticism? Just to rectify the record here. I pay back the loans at 19.7% interest. I don't think that I committed to do a commercial on top of that. I thought that the Republicans' reactions to this was, was unnecessary and out of place. That's very restrained from you, for you. It is, I'm on camera. <laughs> you put me here. <laughs> you turn these things off, I'll give you my own assessment. This is the um, old boardroom of Fiat. Marchione splits his time between the Fiat headquarters in Turin, Italy, and Chrysler headquarters in Auburn Hills, Michigan. But he is fully engaged on both continents at all times. I mean, when you're here, do you get calls? I mean, do you have to deal with Fiat? Yeah, that's why I get up at 3.30 in the morning, so I can deal with the European side and be fine here by the time I get in. I mean, the other thing that helps is the our time zones. When do you go to sleep? 10. I'm not really a late night guy. I used to be when I was younger. Besides being CEO of Chrysler Group and Fiat Automotive, which has nearly 200,000 employees and 166 plants worldwide, Marchione is also chairman of the Fiat Industrial Group, 
which makes heavy equipment, and SGS, the world's largest standards and instruments company, based in Geneva. He manages all of this with five different cell phones he totes around in his knapsack. You got a lot of jobs. Hmm. I have some, yes. Do you remember them all? Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't get confused since I do them all, yes. <laughs> you and I have lived among workaholics in our day. I have never seen anything like Sergio. When it was a holiday in Italy, he'd come to America to work. When it's a holiday in America, he goes to Italy to work. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays were just work days to him and for his whole team, and anybody who signed up with Sergio signed up for the program. Marchione does have passions besides work. He loves opera and jazz and very fast cars. In Turin, he showed us the high end of the Fiat automotive line, which includes Maserati and Ferrari. These are great looking cars. Is there anything here for less than a half a million dollars? All of them. All of them? Yep. Sergio owns a couple of these, but he has no opportunity to drive them. As head of Italy's largest industrial empire, his life is much different here. He's required by the government to travel in bulletproof cars with police escorts and is always surrounded by state security. Sergio seemed more than happy to take us to the old test track that still sits atop an old factory for a short spin in this limited edition Alfa Romeo, a legendary brand that he will reintroduce to the U.S. market in 2014. But even here, he was unable to escape his security detail. It has a severe impact on your private life because you're, you're always with them when you're there. It's part of life. It's part of what I do. Do you have a private life? Sure I do. And it's private. It's private. What he likes to discuss is business, which is worse right now in Europe than in the U.S. What promises to be a serious recession is beginning to affect the economy there, and Fiat and other European car makers are struggling. But it should not affect the future of Chrysler. Do you think they're out of the woods? I think the question of whether Chrysler will survive or not is largely behind us. I think the question at this point is uh, how big a market share can they have? How good can their products be? There are plenty of new products in the pipeline. A brand new Viper will debut next month, and a high-end Maserati SUV built in Detroit will debut next year, along with a whole range of new models. With sales up 40% early this year, the company is projecting its best first quarter in four years. But Marchione, who is right now obsessed with quality, is taking nothing for granted. What's the biggest challenge facing Chrysler right now? They're going to slip on execution. We're going to get something wrong. Big. <laughs> like what? We're going to screw up on a car. It won't sell. It's can possible. You, can you afford that? One car, yes. <laughs> now I can afford a car. Uh, Twelve months ago, it would, have been a, it would have been a disaster. But now I can take the pain. Not, not one, one car. <laughs>